Find a comfortable seat and just feel the sits bones rooting down and the crown of the head reaching up. Try to get the shoulders to stack over the, red, the hips. And just begin to observe the breath. Start to make the breath longer in time and also longer in the body. Try to also make the breath wider. Let it expand the ribs outward. Maybe the breath takes on an audible sound or a whisper at the back of the throat. Nothing too forced, soft and easy. There may be some things in the next 60 minutes that will be presented as challenging, but the most challenging thing that I will ask you to do is to pay attention to this breath. Let this unnatural breath be your guide. As the breath is steady, the body is steady. So the nervous system responds to this calm and steady breath. If you lose attention to the breath at any point, just simply bring it back. And in this way, you'll get the practice of beginning again and again and again and again. On your next inhale, let the shoulders slip up towards the ears and then roll them down the back, let them slip away. Let's do that again. Inhale, sweep the shoulders up towards the ears, then create more space as you let them slip away. One more time like that. Inhale, the shoulders up towards the ears. And then let them slip away. So you always want the shoulders to be relaxed down the back. It takes your whole inhale to lift the arms up, reach them up over the head. And it takes the whole exhale to turn over to the right. Let it take the whole inhale to lift the arms up. And it takes the whole exhale to twist over to the left. Just feeling the body opening up early this morning. Inhale to sweep the arms up over the head, reach up. And then exhale, we're gonna wrap the right arm underneath the left. So it's almost like eagle. So you can do back to back, single wrap would be um, the back of the hand to the back of the hand. And then eventually you're working for that double wrap where the two palms come to touch. Yeah, perfect. You got it. Okay. Good. So on your inhale, you're going to sweep the forearms up, trying to get the forearms parallel to the sky. And then on your exhale, rounding, bringing your elbows to your chest, dropping the head, and just finding cat-cow in this eagle arm variation. So inhale. Sweep the arms up. Almost feel like you're holding up the ceiling with the forearms. So the shoulders are expanding. And then exhale round. Shoulder blades slide away from each other. Good. Return to neutral. And then sweep the arms up again. And then switch it out. So the left arm this time wraps underneath. Yep. So less, yeah, exactly. Sorry, like left arm oh, under. Exactly oh, so go, yeah, so go the other way this this time. So you're either gonna do yeah. a single wrap, which is um, your knuckles are touching or almost touching, or double wrap is what you're working for, which is palm to palm. So on your inhale here, you're gonna reach the forearms up so the forearms are parallel to the ceiling. Then on your exhale, round, drop the head, bring the elbows. And then inhale one more time. Just feeling this expanse in the shoulder. Good, 
and then from here, bring the arms up over the head, and then the right arm meets the mat, and then the left arm reaches up and over the ear. My teachers say that lateral side stretching, spinal extension, so all these twists is actually something that you should do every morning. So I just think this feels so good in the morning. Yeah, it's just amazing. So start to just maybe make some circles, just move in a way that feels organic this morning. And if, you're, if you've chosen the circles, just take the circles the other way. Just keep slipping that right shoulder away from the right ear and grounding the left sits bone into the mat. From here, come up halfway and then turn the chest over the right and just start to walk the fingertips kind of further away from you as the torso comes to lay or almost lay on the right leg. You should continue to root almost like press into the fingertips to sit back a little more so that you're still rooting in the left sits bones. And let the head go. Just continuing to feel an opening in the intercostal or the side body, the muscles that help you breathe. And slowly walk the fingers towards you, letting the head come up last. And then go the other way. So reach the right arm up and over. And maybe the left forearm comes down. Good. So you want to just feel like more space here. So more space between the left ear and the left shoulder. And then just reaching up and over, maybe looking up at the hand. If you took the circles, you could take them on this side or any. Just move in the opposite direction. Reaching up and over once again. And then coming up halfway to turn the torso over the left leg and then just start to walk the fingertips. You find a fold here over the left leg. Just keep pressing into the fingertips, trying to shift some weight back in the hips. And let the head go. Breathe into the right side body. And start to walk the fingertips back and roll the head so that it's coming up last. One more last thing here from a seated position. So we're going to try to interlock the fingers behind the back as you're sitting. From here on your inhale, you're going to scoop the chest up or the collarbone. Maybe the gaze goes with it. I'm just finding an opening in the front of the shoulder. If the, if the knuckles are able to come to the ground, you can release the thumbs. So like a thumbs down almost with your fingers interlocked. And then press into the mat with the thumb. This can give you more leverage. So if you press into the thumb, your chest almost kind of lifts here. And just breathe here as the chest and the collarbone expands. One more deep breath in. And then exhale, let that go, and just find all fours. So just finding your alignment here, your shoulders are stacked over your wrists and your hips are over the knees. From here, you wanna just shift the gaze so that it's about six feet in front of you, and then draw the navel to spine. So press into the hands and draw, energetically draw the navel into the spine. Bend the elbows straight back and hug them into your chest. Lower the chest and the chin. From here, we're just gonna, all you're gonna do is just slide the heart forward, and then just hold. Just an easy, easy back bend here. So pressing into the tops of the feet, feet are wider, hips width. And then let everything go. Find pranam, which is just hands extended or arms extended and feet extended back. The forehead comes to the mat. Just take a deep breath here, feel grounded. 
you've lost command of the breath, just simply bring it back. We're going to take the right arm and just thread it underneath the left. So we're finding thread the needle on our bellies. So essentially you just want to roll onto the head or the back of the right shoulder blade. And then maybe you just bend the left knee just to find a little more stability here. And just breathe into that right shoulder. Maybe you walk the left fingertips up a little bit more. Then open up that left arm and find a supine twist on your back. So in your twist, you want to try to continue to melt the left shoulder blade down towards the mat. And then just breathe here. Maybe the gaze shifts over to the left. Take one more deep breath in. And then exhale, find your belly. Once again, find pranam, arms and legs extended. And then switch it out so the left arm comes underneath the right. And then roll on to that left shoulder. Maybe that right knee comes to bend. And you have a 90 degree angle from the hip to the knee. I feel like I'm doing this wrong. <laughs> <laughs> no, actually you're doing it right. Do you know that? Do you want to know what I did last time? I was watching you. You said bend your right knee. No, I mean that's fair. It's totally fair. No, that's totally right. Yeah, so you want to just bend the knee so that you know, like if you're sleeping on your belly and you're kind of like I don't know, I sleep like that, where like I'm sleeping on my belly and then I bend my right knee. Yeah. So like, like come. That. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Do you like it's? It's just kind of like, it's the cozy kind of like feeling where you just want to like open up that right hand, the right arm, so the right arm is over. So now you open it and now you're in this like T position on your back, well, it's a twist. So you're on your back. Yeah. Trying to get your chest parallel to the ceiling. So your right shoulder blade is working or kind of trying to melt down. This time roll all the way onto your back and then just plant the feet and measure out so that the middle fingers can graze the heels. From here you're going to take your right leg and cross the right ankle over the left knee. So we're going to figure four here. So kind of working that right outer hip. So from here if this is good, if you're working here and this is a lot and it's intense, great, stay here. If you want a little bit more, you would thread the right hand in between the legs, lift the left leg, and then make a basket, kind of interlock your hands behind that left thigh, making a basket for the thigh. So what you want to work for here is your left knee coming closer to your face while your right knee is further moving further away from your face. And the way you do that is by taking your right elbow or forearm and gently pressing it, pressing that leg away. Just breathe here, relax what can be relaxed. That means the jaw and the shoulders. Breathe into the hip. How are you doing with this? Do you feel this? Good. Yeah, I like this one. So good. Especially in the morning. Take one more deep breath in. And then exhale. You can bring the left foot down. Leave the right foot where it is. We're going to reach for the outer, something on the outer right leg. So you can go for the foot. If that's a little too far, get like the shit somewhere on the shin or just somewhere on that leg. So you've got your foot, which is good. So we're gonna, this is just a half happy baby, essentially. So what you wanna work for here is a knee into armpit connection. Keep, try, keep rooting the left sits bones down here. So you want stability in the hips. You want your shoulders relaxed. Relax your jaw. 
flex the right foot, and then just gently pull that knee into the armpit. Good, from here, let that go, and then just knot the knees from side to side. Just loosening up. Already noticing some differences between the right and left side. And then find neutral once again, where your both feet are planted. And then just switch it up. So we're gonna find that figure four on the left side. So left ankle crosses over the right knee. And then interweave that left hand in between the leg and make a basket behind the right leg. And so as you pull that left knee towards you, you're gonna use the left arm to press the left knee away from you. And that's how we feel that opening in the hip. Breathe, breathe into that hip, relax the shoulders. A lot of these hip openers will kind of stay a little bit longer just because it takes a little bit longer to, to really, you know, stretch and lengthen and, and release that muscle. Reach for the outer foot or the outer leg. Each side is different, so just feel where you're at. And then find that half happy baby once again. Try to keep both sits bones rooting down. Try to feel for that knee to armpit connection. Take a really do I keep that body to go out on the right side? Do I try to keep that straight? So your, your right leg? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Keep that. You could also extend the leg. It doesn't always have to be bent. You can also extend it if that uh, feels good. Yeah. So you definitely, but you definitely want, if you extend it, you want to keep your toes pointing up. Okay. And try to keep working that thigh into the mat. Um, but I want to keep my knee facing the ceiling. Yes, exactly. Okay. Exactly. All right. You can let that go. And then windshield wiper the legs. So we're gonna move through two core exercises just to start firing up and creating some heat in the body. So this may be a little bit familiar to you. So interlace the hands back behind the head and then try to bring the knee to touch the elbows. If they touch, press hard so that there's a, there's a connection, there's an energy there. If they don't touch, that's not a big deal. Just you want the feel for drawing the knees to the elbows, and in doing so, you're gonna activate the core. So you're gonna inhale here, scoop the tail, leave the feet as they are, exhale, extend the right leg long. Inhale, lift the tail, don't lift the foot. Exhale, bring the knee to the elbow once again. Inhale, scoop the tail. Exhale, extend the left leg long. Lift the tailbone as you inhale, don't lift the left foot. And then exhale, bring that knee to the elbow. One more round like that. Inhale, scoop the tail. Exhale, extend the right leg long. Inhale, scoop the tail. Don't lift the foot. And then exhale, bring the knees to your elbows. One more like that. Inhale, scoop the tail. Don't touch the feet. And exhale, extend the left leg long. Inhale, scoop the tail. Exhale, bring both knees to the elbows and then palm the knees and just let the legs dangle. Just releasing any kinks in the low back, maybe taking some circles with the knees. All right, second part of this. So we're gonna open up the legs wide, try to have the knees in line with the hips and then the knees in line with the ankles. So we're kind of in this like wide-legged frog pose. We're gonna interlace the hands behind the back once, behind the neck once again. And as you inhale, you're gonna lift the shoulders, exhale, point the elbows high, scoop the tail, get the belly to hollow in and out. Inhale, lower halfway down. 
Exhale, lift the shoulders high, point the elbows up, and get the belly to scoop and hollow out. Inhale, lower halfway down. Exhale, point the elbows high, scoop the tail, and get the belly to hollow out. Good. Inhale, lower halfway down. Keep flexing through the feet. And then exhale, point the elbows high, hollow out the belly, extend the tail down. Good. Inhale, lower halfway down. Two more like that. Exhale, point the elbows high, scoop the tail, and get the belly to hollow. Inhale, lower halfway down. One more like that. Exhale, point the elbows up high, scoop the tail. And then drop everything down to the mat. Just take a moment here. Plant the feet. Maybe close the eyes, just reconnect. Observing the challenge, bringing your whole self to it. It takes your whole inhale to lift the hips and lift the arms up over the head. It takes your whole exhale to lower everything to the mat. Keep hugging your knees into each other as you inhale, lift the arms up, lift the hips. And then it takes your whole exhale to lower everything down to the mat. So reconnecting here, recalibrating the breath to movement. Then lower everything down to the mat. Extend the legs long, extend the arms over the head, and then come to flip over onto the belly. Press back into a wide-legged child's pose. So toes come to touch, knees apart. From here, you're going to flip the palms so that the palms are facing up, and then let the fingertips find the shoulder tips. Start to walk the elbows towards the top of the mat. And when you can't go anymore, then you can walk the elbows in towards the ears. So just finding a stretch in the upper arm here, stretch in the shoulders, breathe into that space. Extend the arms long, flip the palms, and then press back into your downward facing dog. So, I'm gonna come take a look where you're at. So I want you to try to fortify your foundation here. So drop the head. Good, this looks good. Look up at the fingers, and then press your weight into your thumb, your middle finger, and your forefinger. Can you press more weight back into your heels? Good. Try to bend the knees a little bit and see if that helps with pressing more weight and shifting more weight back into the heels. Drop the head, bend the elbows down, then turn the elbows in towards your face, into your ears, and then re-extend them. On your next inhale, roll yourself out to plank. So a plank in yoga means a rounded upper back. So your, your upper back is the highest point on your body. You want to press into the hands to get some weight out of the hands. Spine is long here. And you keep extending through the heels. Bring it back down or facing down. One more time like that. Inhale forward to a plank, top of a push up. And then exhale, downward facing dog. Start to tiptoe the feet until they're in between the hands. From here, I want you to grab opposite elbows and then just dangle. Maybe keeping the knees soft in this first forward fold. Just to try to get the chest to lay onto the thighs. Drop the head. And slowly roll up to a stand. So, at this point in the practice, um, we're going to break down a sun salutation. So, Surya Namaskar A, it is a, um, symbolically, it's a prayer to the sun. 
Um, physically, it means one breath per movement. Um, if you put those two together, in my opinion, it's, it's a moving meditation, right? It's, it's your chance to connect to the breath, to recalibrate, to reconnect. Um, in yoga, in many typical vinyasa classes, this is presented as almost like a move through your vinyasa or your flow. Um, this is what they mean because it is one breath per movement and it's seen as almost a reset. Um, but there's four different variations and I do want to spend some time just going over them. We're just going to walk through them together um, because it's important for you to kind of find like what works for your body. So spine tadasana at the top of the mat, look down at the feet, ground through the feet, press into all four corners of the feet. Bring your hands to heart center. Inhale, sweep the arms up over the head. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look out. Exhale, step back to a plank position, top of the push up, lower the knees. And on your inhale, drop the belly, lift the collarbone. Then exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale here. Exhale. Inhale here. And then tiptoe the feet so that they're up to meet the hands. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look out. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, sweep the arms around and up. So when when you go to the the like the half lift, yep. should I aim to keep my go from here to like here mm -hmm. or should I come to here? Yes. So your first, um, good question. Your first, um, first best bet is to go to the legs. Okay. So that's, right. like, that's the ideal position. Yeah. Because what you want is you want more weight in the front toes and the big toes. What you also want is you want straight legs. So it's okay to micro bend, but whatever is going to give you straight legs, straight spine, that could be up here. It could be here. You're going to work towards fingertips down. That's like terminal, terminal goal. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So for now, I think what, where you went here is like where you're, where, like go with what your, your body is kind of saying. And it seems like where okay. you showed me, you showed me shins. Which is typically, you know, I, I forget, but like that's that's a starting point, right? You length to find length, you know, you're gonna press against your shins and lengthen through that way. Can you show me what it looks like for you in um, like with your fingers still on the ground, like where I need to go? I sure. Like yeah. Weird. So your my fingers are almost like six feet away from my toes. Got it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Good. Yeah. You got it. So from here, we're gonna sweep the arms around and up, and then fold again. We're gonna move through the second variation. So inhale, lengthen the spine, look out. Exhale, find a plank position, top of the push up, and then lower, bend the elbow straight back and lower to the ground, all the way. On your inhale, you're gonna find cobra pose. And then on your exhale, seat to heels, downward facing dog. So that's all one exhale. Do that whole seat to heels, downward facing dog. So the exhale is long, right? The inhale is long too. Inhale here. And then exhale, start to tiptoe the feet up to meet the hands. Lengthen the spine. Exhale, fold again. Inhale, sweep the arms around and up. Exhale, fold again, variation three. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look out. Exhale, step back to plank, lower the knees, lower the chest, lower the chin. Inhale, sweep the heart forward, find a cobra pose. Exhale, everything drops to the mat. Seat comes to heels. Downward facing dog. Take two breaths here. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. Exhale. 
Inhale. And then on your exhale, start to walk the fingertips, the feet to meet the fingertips. Inhale, find length. Exhale, lower into a fold. Inhale, sweep the arms around and up. Exhale, fold again, last variation. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look out. Exhale, plant the hands and bend the knees next to the feet. This time we're going to jump back to bent elbows. This is Chaturanga Dandasana. So you're hovering as the elbows are squeezing in towards the midline. Inhale, come to the tops of the feet and lift the heart. Upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take three breaths here. Inhale here. And exhale, start to tiptoe the feet up to meet the hands. Inhale, lengthen the spine, look out. Exhale, fold. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Sama CDE, so bring the hands to heart center and then just take a moment. So the last one that we're gonna do, I want it to be Yogi's Choice. So um, are there any of those variations that like feel good for you? Um, I like the, uh, gosh, the, the second one. The lower all the way down to Cobra? Yes. Great. So we'll do that one. Inhale, sweep the arms up. Exhale, fold over the legs. Inhale, find length, look out. Exhale, step back to plank. And then bend the elbow straight back and lower all the way down to your belly. Inhale, come to the tops of the feet, press into the hands and lift the heart. Finding cobra. Exhale, everything comes to the mat. Seat to heels, and then downward facing dog. Just take two breaths here to just reset. Drop the head, press into the hands, try to shift more weight back. Some people consider that whole like sun salutation to be a complete yoga practice. Um, and it, it definitely prepares the mind and it prepares the body for, for asana, for the actual physical postures, which we're going to move into now. Um, so in many ways, you know, it kind of feels like you're beginning again. It doesn't mean we're starting over, but 